Hey everyone, it's Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. Thank you so much for joining us today. And in this video, I'll be comparing the Tesla Universal Mobile Connector with an alternative product from evsc.com.au, their very own portable EV charging box. Now, many of you may know that the uh, Tesla UMC is no longer included with new Tesla vehicle purchases. So today is a good time to check out whether it's still worth purchasing one of these or looking at an alternative product like this product from evsc.com.au. Let's start off with the price, shall we? And the Universal Mobile Connector is available in Australia for $550. It comes with a six meter cable and it has two tails, an eight amp adapter and also a 12 amp adapter as well. Now in the past with a firmware update, you could update these uh, connections to 10 amps and 15 amps, but currently there is a known bug that does not allow you to update the current to 10 amps or 15 amps. So at the moment you are stuck with eight amps and 12 amps until Tesla fixes this problem. The alternative product from evsc.com.au is the type two portable EV charger, 10 amp plug valued at $407 uh, from their website. Of course, using coupon code TeslaTom will get you 5% of this product and other products store wide. And it does come with a five meter length cable with the maximum current being eight amps for this product. All right, let's go through each product one by one. Okay, so let's start with the Tesla Universal Mobile Connector. It comes in a nice case like this with the Tesla logo on it. You get two tails. At the moment, they're saying it's an eight amp tail and a 12 amp tail due to the firmware update issue. The 12 amp tail is slightly wider. The earth pin is wider compared to the standard eight amp tail, which you can plug into most household sockets there, which is this one here. So you won't mix them up. You cannot plug the 12 amp tail into the standard household socket due to the wider earth pin. However, you can fit the uh, eight amp tail into 15 amp sockets. If you've got access to a 15 amp uh, socket, then the UMC might be for you. So you get a slightly faster rate. And this is the charging box that's included with it. Uh, on one end, you can plug in either the eight amp or 12 amp tail into it like this, very easy. And then this goes straight into the wall and also very easy to remove like that. And then the other side is the type two connection that goes into your Tesla Model 3, uh, Model Y, Model S, Model X. Okay, so that is the Tesla UMC. And of course, to change the current, there is no physical switches on the box itself. You have to use uh, the car's infotainment UI, which I'll go through as well in a moment. All right, so now let's have a look at the alternative from evsc.com.au, portable EV charging box, type two, eight amps, six meters app included as well. And on the box, it says intelligent chip, LCD display, high ingress protection, IP66, and waterproof as well, evsc.com.au. So inside, there's no case, but it does come with a manual like this and uh, all the information and specs you need for this product is uh, in this manual, which is well set out. Uh, so everything you need is there. A two year warranty, operating temperature minus 25 to 55 degrees. For this 5.5 meter product, it is 2.1 kilos. There's a 10 meter variant as well, which is three kilograms. And uh, there's a QR code in there to download the app for Apple App Store or Google Play, which we'll go through today as well. And again, all the information you need is uh, in this manual here set up very nicely. And the best thing about this product is that you can actually export your charging data, uh, whether you need that for tax purposes or for your employment to claim back from your employer, then this certainly comes in very handy. And inside the kit, you get, of course, uh, everything is laid out in one connection like this, just one big unit, uh, no separate eight amp or 12 amp tails, just the one eight amp tail for now. It is type two on the other end, same as the Tesla UMC. So that will connect not only to Tesla vehicles, but to most other modern EVs as well with a type two socket. Also has a nice uh, cover as well over the top. Now I'll just bring the Tesla cable over so you can have a look at the difference in width. So you can just see the EVSC cabling, which is this one, is just a little bit thinner compared to the Tesla cabling uh, on this bottom one here. So there's a difference in width. Okay, and so pretty lightweight as you can see there. And that is the box, which you can start manually from here, or you can also start the charging from your app as well, which is included with this product. All right, so I think it's time to give both products a good test. Let's do it. All right, so let's start with the Tesla UMC. There it is plugged into my wall there, just the standard 10 amp socket using the uh, UMC's eight amp tail. And all it is is just a box like that, as you can see with the Tesla logo. All right, let's plug it into the car. Okay, to lift the Tesla charge flap, just push it once. 
There we go. And then you literally just plug it in. Okay, and away we go. Flashing green means it's working. Okay, so inside the car, you can see all the stats there. Currently charging at two kilowatts, uh, eight of eight amps. As I said before, there is an issue at the moment upgrading the firmware to enable 10 amp charging. Uh, Tesla is aware of this at the time of this video. And uh, you can adjust the amperage or current from the car's UI. You can reduce it like that or bring it back up to maximum to eight amps. And at the box, like I said, there's no other manual control, uh, just the Tesla logo flashing green to indicate that it's working. And there's several ways to stop charging. You can use the app, you can use the car's UI, you can, I guess, flick it off at the switch. But I think one of the benefits of the uh, UMC is that you can actually just push the button here on the plug and that stops charging. You can just pull it out like that, which is quite a nice feature. And the charge flap goes down. Okay, so let's have a look at the back of the alternative product from EVSC. So we've got a hook at the top there. If you want to hang this up in your garage to use as your daily charger, we've got some LED display status there, uh, disconnected mode, static, connected mode, it's a static green, charging mode, it's a rolling uh, green light, we'll see that in a second, and the finish mode, it's a static green again. And if it's flashing red, that means there is a fault. Uh, QR codes to download the app, we'll go through that in a second, for Google Play and Apple App Store, and then instructions on how to start charging. So you can either start charging from the box itself, or you can use the app to start charging and stop charging too. And there are some specifications for you guys to look at as well. With the rated current, it's eight amps maximum. And there it is just plugged into my standard 10 amp socket. And then just panning down to the actual unit itself. There's the LED display right there. You see the voltage at the moment, sitting around 218, 219 volts. And there'll be other stats when I start charging, such as the current and the amount of energy that's being charged and the time elapsed as well. Current temperature 18 degrees of the unit, eight amps maximum. And you can press that button there to start uh, and stop charging manually or from the app. And then this green light to show that it is either charging or idle at the moment. Okay, at the car end, you can just push the button there uh, and just plug in like that. Okay, so I'm plugged in. Uh, I've got to press either start charging from the box or from the app. Now, one more thing I've got to say about the Tesla UMC is that you can actually open the charge flap using the button as well. So that's one benefit of just having it all as part of the same Tesla ecosystem. Whereas obviously on third party charge plugs, there's no button to open the flap. Okay, so using this product, you can either actually start charging by pressing this button on the box, or you can use the app, which you can download, of course, from your Apple App Store or Google Play. Uh, I actually prefer starting the charge from the app because then you can adjust your current like this, sliding it up and down, right? So all the way down to six amps, seven amps, eight amps. And that way you get the maximum rate uh, using the app. I found that pressing the button on the uh, box is variable. Sometimes you get six amps, sometimes you get four amps. So you get a more consistent result using the app personally. So let's go for it now. We've got eight amps, 220 volts, and of course, using the app, you can also record the charge session too, which is uh, handy, of course, like I said, for tax purposes or uh, claiming back from your employer. Now let's press custom charge and I'm gonna show you there. You can see you can either have a single charge session. Uh, you can set the delay duration up to 24 hours. So if I don't wanna charge now, I can uh, actually just slide it up like this. So I can start in like say 10 hours, uh, four hours, whatever you want, up to 24 hours like that. You can also change the charge duration. So if I want to only charge for say 10 hours, eight hours, whatever you want, up to 24 again. And then you can also charge the amount in kilowatt hours too. So say I want it from zero, whatever, uh, 43, all the way to up to 100 kilowatt hours. So that's quite nice having that function through the app to limit your charge in a few different ways, uh, whether it be delay charging, uh, duration or limit by uh, kilowatt hours in energy. And uh, if you want to set a schedule, you can as well. So repeated charging, you can have a start time. So plug in whatever start time you want every day and then estimated stop time as well. Now currently uh, you can't do that with the Tesla uh, UI. You can't actually set a stop charging time. I've had a lot of feedback from viewers uh, asking for that feature. At the moment you can't do it. Uh, but I think there is a software update coming to the Tesla UI soon, so stay tuned for that. But as it stands, you can't set a stop time. Uh, you can also set a charging duration for your repeated charging sessions and repeat and either every day or you can click multiple days as well or whatever days you want, whatever suits your lifestyle. 
Uh, and that is quite nice having that repeated charging function or the single charging timer function as well. And like I said, you can export uh, your sessions. So there are a couple of sessions I tested before as well. You can export like that as a table, as you can see there, for whatever you need. And you can refresh as well. And that's obviously talking to the unit behind me here to give the most accurate records from the box to the unit, which is good. You can see all the records like that. And there's some nice charge statistics as well, uh, day by day for kilowatt hours, duration and emissions. There's some notifications there and you can do a firmware update about the charger itself. Firmware update, latest version already and some general settings. So you can change the name of the charger, change the password, Wi-Fi settings, temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit and start charging by button on or off, which is this button here. And from the profile, you can change your language, English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, FAQ section. There you go, you can go through that for help. Privacy policy and about the charger. There's the latest version. Okay, when you first start up the charger, let's press connect. There we go, it'll connect like that via Bluetooth. All right, so that's a run through of the app. Let's uh, start charging. Okay, you heard the click on the box there. And these two should correlate, so let's have a look side by side. All right, so there we are, so 8.2 amps. It's currently getting from the supply and 1.77 kilowatts in power. And uh, yeah, they obviously do correlate voltage, amount charged, duration, and temperature are all very similar indeed. And we've got current charge settings here on the app, uh, auto full charge because I didn't play with the settings too much. Max current eight amps and information it's currently charging. And some nice uh, graphics there showing the power and current. And that's the display on the box there showing that green flashing light that shows that it is going, it is charging. And there it is at the charge port, flashing green, means it's working. And on the car's UI, very similar to the Tesla UMC, going at two kilowatts, eight amps, you can also adjust the current from the car as well. Let's see whether when we adjust from the car, it uh, correlates with the app. So let's go down to say six. And there's the app showing six as well. So that was about maybe a 15 second delay, but um, there it is, six amps on the app and six amps on the car as well. Okay, to finish a charge session, uh, again, you can either stop it at the box in the car uh, or you just stop it from the app here. So let's do that, let's finish charging. Boom, I had a click at the box and obviously a click at the car as well means uh, that it stopped charging. And that's what the app looks like, what it's done. And then you can have a look at your charge session from the statistics, there we go. That was today's session, 21st of July, 0.08 kilowatt hours, 2.93 minutes. And of course that can be exported as well for your own purpose. And to unplug, just literally just pull it out like that and we're done. And the charge flap does go down automatically like the Tesla UMC. Okay, so now the Tesla UMC fits perfectly inside the uh, car's frunk, whether it be Model 3 or Model Y, as does the alternative product from EVSC. All right, everyone, well, that is the difference between the Tesla UMC and the alternative product from EVSC. Obviously, there are benefits, uh, pros and cons to both products. With the Tesla product, obviously, it's part of the Tesla ecosystem. Uh, it's got that nice uh, button on the plug, which makes it easier to uh, open the charge flap and stop and start charging. Uh, it's got two tails, 8 and 12 amps. To be honest with you, uh, most people will only be able to access this one. Not many people have a 15 amp socket in their home, but obviously if you do at home or at work, then this might be more useful for you. It comes in a nice carry case, of course, uh, with a nice Tesla logo. So they're the benefits of having uh, the Tesla UMC. The alternative product, of course, is a bit cheaper, $407 at the moment from evsc.com.au. With my Tesla Tom coupon code, 5% uh, off, it actually brings this product under $400 compared to $550 from uh, Tesla. Now with the alternative product from EVSC, uh, you can actually stop and start charging with a physical button on the box itself. It's got a nice app that's connected via Bluetooth that you can uh, control from. Uh, you can also export the charging data for your tax purposes or for your employer if need be. And it also comes with a nice instruction manual as well. Uh, with all the information and specs laid out nicely. And arguably this is more versatile because this can be used for other EVs as well, not just Tesla vehicles. 
Of course, the cons is that it only comes with one tail. It doesn't have a nice case that you can fit this into, but nevertheless, as you saw, it still fit into the uh, Tesla frunk or uh, bonnet quite nicely, regardless. It also comes with a nice cover for the plug for extra protection. Uh, and not having the extra tail, like I said before, most people don't have a 15 amp socket in their home anyway, so this is probably useful enough for, uh, I would say, the majority of EV users. This 10 amp plug, capable of 8 amp charging. All right, everyone, you've been watching Tom from Ludicrous Feed comparing the Tesla UMC Universal Mobile Connector with the uh, alternative product from evse.com.au. I'll leave details of both products in the video description below. And yeah, I'll leave it up to you to decide which product will be more useful for your situation. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next Ludicrous Feed video, happy charging.